Good evening and um, welcome to the special meeting of the Hampton Beach Area Commission on the subject of our transportation component of the Hampton Beach Master Plan. My name is uh, John Nyan, the Chairman of the Beach Commission, and I welcome everybody here uh, tonight. And then those at home that are watching this uh, live on, on Channel 22. Um, I've been asked just to kind of give a very, very brief background of why we're here tonight and what brought us here tonight. And then I'm going to turn the meeting over to William Rose, who is our project manager for this transportation grant, who will then um, offer some more details about the, the grant itself. And then we'll be turning it over to uh, VHB for their presentation tonight. A couple of years ago, uh, as one of the uh, tasks of the Hampton Beach Area Commission, we had uh, gone out and applied for a grant uh, with the Federal Highway um, in Washington. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the grant that we initially applied for was a, uh, a multi-million dollar grant. Uh, it was a, a grant that we had uh, secured support from the local government, the state government, uh, on the redoing of Ocean Boulevard. It was an approximately uh, 11, 12 million dollar proposal that we had submitted into Federal Highway. Um, during that time, we also went to Washington, uh, Senator Stiles, myself, uh, Fred Welch representing the town, uh, to actually advocate uh, to Federal Highway for support. Unfortunately, uh, that time around, um, we were not selected as one of the uh, um, proposal winners in the, in the, in the country, um, but they encouraged us to uh, try again. Um, and possibly try for um, a little bit less than $13 million. Uh, so the Beach Commission went back and we decided that, well, let's go back to them the following year, but let's go back with an idea of a, um, a study of our Hampton Beach Master Plan and everything within that plan that talks about transportation um, and related to transportation. And then hopefully with some of those funds, we'd also be able to start the uh, conceptual detail engineering designs of some projects that we would like to see come out of the master plan. Bill will talk about that in a, in a few minutes. Um, so we did, we, we made the application, got the support once again of both the, the local government and the state government. It was earmarked in the state of New Hampshire uh, by the governor as their number one priority uh, under this federal grant. And lo and behold, a couple of months later, uh, we had heard from Federal Highway that we were awarded $375,000. $300,000 of which was um, actual grant money. The $75,000 is what we call in-kind, the 20% the local match. Um, so we then, uh, we being the Beach Commission, made a decision that since we were primarily made up of volunteers representing different organizations, both at the federal, county, and state level, that we really needed a project manager to come in and manage this $300,000 for us. So we chose the Department of Transportation, um, since we ha already had an existing commissioner, Bill Watson, uh, who is in the management team. Uh, at DOT and, and we sat and negotiated a contract with uh, New Hampshire DOT to actually manage this project for us. Uh, the Beach Commission still has the authority to say yes or no, uh, but we go to uh, DOT for guidance, uh, techn technical advice, and, um, and so forth. Um, that then um, was fin finalized. Uh, it had to go all the way up through the uh, Governor's Council and the governor. Uh, that was all put into play last year, and the, uh, the grant um, then started to move forward. Um, it was decided that within DOT that uh, we would steal away one of the best project managers that they had available, and that's William Rose here. Um, and so he agreed uh, with some influence from Mr. Uh, Watson that he had become our project manager. Um, at that point, he started to put the project plan together for us in terms of what we really needed to do based on what our proposal was with the Federal Highway. Uh, we have been actively working since the beginning of this calendar year uh, in doing some of the preliminary steps 
um, and one of which was uh, DOT identifying VHB as the main contractor who's going to do a lot of this work at, at the first stage of this project, which is the study stage. Um, from that, this meeting has occurred because this is the first of a couple of meetings that will take place over the next uh, five to six months with regard to um, people's input, the community's input um, on what uh, they understand it to be in terms of transportation within the master plan, uh, where, we, where we were back in 2001, 2002, where we are today, what are some of the things that um, were said to be done, uh, needed to be done back then that has in fact been done, and what are some of the things that still need to be done, and then third and most importantly, what are some of the things that maybe people back in 2001 didn't see or realize in terms of vision that now we do back in now 2015. So all of that is gonna be phase one of this uh, study that we're doing. Uh, with that, I'm gonna pass it over to William Rose and he can pick it up from here. Thank you, John. Uh, so that was actually a very good summary, John. I don't, I don't know if there's anything left to say. Um, Do you want to disclose what the career alternatives were to, <laughs> to doing this? Yeah. Driving a snowplow? Or? Sure. Uh, so as John mentioned, uh, this is a, a project that's focused on doing more than just updating a plan. I know I, I heard some sidebar conversation just before the meeting with folks really interested in knowing if we're going to do more than just a study here. And I will say the answer to that is yes. Um, Gordon can attest to the fact that uh, the contract that we have that the Department of Transportation has with VHB and their subconsultant ORW is a two-part contract. The first part is what we're talking about now to actually update the plan. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot that's happened, uh, particularly with the improvements to the state park uh, in, in between the 2001 adoption of the current plan and today. And there's a lot of ideas that folks have expressed in the intervening 14 years as far as what kinds of improvements or amenities I'd like to see in the area uh, as far as transportation. And really, uh, part of our conversation, and John, John will attest to this, at the outset was there was an interest in not just doing a plan update. Um, and the way to accomplish that is to actually is to give folks something to do, an action plan, and not just the plan, uh, but also to start to refine some design concepts. So the intent here is beginning with this conversation this evening and we'll continue online afterwards and then uh, we'll have another opportunity or two to meet uh, later on and as we get towards the fall. But it's to figure out what, what, what's out there for options, what makes sense strategically to pursue further and has uh, strong community support and then take those and advance those through engineering design as far as the funding will allow us to go. And that's how we're structured right now with the, with the project. And with that, um, as, I've, as we've mentioned, VHB is the consultant. I'd like to introduce, uh, again, the team. We have Gordon Levy, who's the prime uh, contact and the project manager on behalf of VHB. And he's joined here by Dale Abbott, also with VHB, and uh, Robert White uh, with ORW. And these folks should be familiar faces for the most part because uh, they were heavily involved in the state park improvements. So with that, Gordon, why don't you? Thank you very much, William. Um, just to sort of go briefly over what uh, we'd like to accomplish tonight, uh, I don't want to uh, stay too long. Uh, we're trying to get done what we need to get done in about an hour and a half, but uh, please be assured that as long as anybody wants to talk, we'll be here to listen. So uh, I don't want to cut anybody short either. So we've just done a project overview. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the 2001 plan and, and what came out of that. Uh, we've done an existing conditions inventory uh, of, of uh, the 2015 conditions. And then I'd like to have an, a kind of open discussion, and we may want to break out into a couple of different groups for this, uh, to uh, just get your thoughts on uh, a, a few questions that we had. Uh, then we can sort of report back and, and have a broader discussion and try to uh, put some prioritization to, uh, to what comes out of that discussion. And then uh, we've got some exciting things happening with outreach and, and social media uh, to continue the conversation uh, outside of this room. And uh, we'll talk about next steps and then we can all go home and watch the NBA finals. Um, so, um, 
So the, the uh, 2001 Hampton Beach Area Master Plan was meant to be a 50-year plan, which is sort of unusual because 50 years is an awfully long horizon to, be, uh, to do, be doing specific plans. But as it turns out, it's probably uh, a reasonable time frame to accomplish uh, what we need to accomplish at the beach. Uh, it was approved in November 2001. And you know, many of the same conditions that uh, existed in 2001 exist today. Uh, there was limited parking, uh, poor levels of service from a transportation standpoint, a, tra a traffic uh, operation standpoint. Uh, there's limited public transit. Uh, there were uh, numerous pedestrian conflicts and, and, uh, and causing congestion and poor bicycle accommodations. Um, so the recommendations that came out of that plan were to reconstruct the bridge over the Hampton River, uh, reconstruct Ocean Boulevard, uh, one lane, one way north, eliminating all of the on-street parking on Ocean Boulevard and accommodating 15-foot sidewalks on either side with, uh, with uh, a multi-purpose sort of service and bicycle lane uh, in addition to the, the traffic lane. Uh, reconstruct uh, Ashworth Avenue into a three-lane facility, which would have sort of a center turn lane and two la uh, one lane in each direction uh, with sidewalks on both sides. <coughs> that would have required uh, taking of property on each side of, of Ashworth uh, Avenue um, at, at least four feet, which in some cases is kind of problematic. Um, the uh, And then uh, one one-way circulation on the side streets that's actually been implemented uh, and uh, reconstruct intersections at gateways to the beach uh, at Church Street and at Highland Avenue uh, and also presumably at Winnicott Road um, and then also uh, to control traffic movements and uh, accommodate pedestrians there was a proposal to install traffic signals uh, at Route 1A and the, the State Park Drive uh, at Ashworth Avenue and Ocean Boulevard, and four signals as you as you go north south on Ashworth uh, Avenue, um, and then also at uh, Highland Avenue and Ocean Boulevard, and then another uh, suggestion in the plan was to uh, create p pedestrian crossing areas on Ocean Boulevard, which actually would be sort of full block widths uh, or lengths of, of Ocean Boulevard. So presumably that's not a crosswalk that is a block wide. It is, it means actually turning pieces of Ocean Boulevard into uh, pedestrian areas and limiting um, vehicular traffic. Um, and then uh, provide remote parking facilities with uh, a shuttle service to the beach. And I know there's been a lot of discussion about building garages at various places uh, in the beach area. Uh, we also currently have, uh, I believe it's in design, the, uh, the uh, multimodal facility out at uh, 101 and, and 1. Mm -hmm. um, so there are certainly some, uh, some potentials uh, to look at that. Uh, this is the plan that was in mm -hmm. the plan uh, and sort of details some of those things. Uh, and now I'm going to kind of go off the mic, but. These S's are signal locations, and the arrows are directional arrows for, uh, for traffic. And uh, the, the uh, improvements that I just sort of ran you through are embodied in this, in this plan. Uh, this is for the North Beach area. It's pretty simple. Uh, it has to do with sand management and uh, providing additional uh, parking facilities, kind of reworking some of the uh, some of the parking facilities uh, and improving uh, the, uh, the gateway aspects uh, to the beach. Some of these things have been done. There was, uh, we actually worked on uh, providing the new uh, uh, bathhouse up at uh, the, the Northampton Beach State Park. Um, so there's been some work done, but, but uh, not a lot of that. Um, with respect to, uh, you know, this is actually pretty, pretty similar to what got built, uh, <laughs> surprisingly. Uh, but the, uh, the state park 
uh, redevelopment project, which, uh, which Bob and I both worked on, uh, I think has been a resounding success and has really opened people's eyes to some of the potential in Hampton Beach. And, you know, we really need to kind of keep that train rolling and, and uh, uh, roll out some additional improvements. Um, this is just a depiction of uh, one of those enhanced uh, gateway areas. Uh, this happens to be at Highland Avenue, and, and uh, this is a section where there's that median parking uh, facility. This actually suggests moving the traffic to the middle and doing, uh, doing parking at the sides. Uh, we'll have to take a look at that and see if that makes sense, because we know that parking is, uh, is absolutely a critical uh, concern. Uh, but then doing little plaza areas and enhanced side uh, crosswalks to uh, make, make the pedestrian movements <coughs> safer. Um, and then this is a depiction of a phased approach to uh, improving, um, improving uh, the, the crosswalks first and then maybe doing some median plantings and then eventually creating these uh, sort of pedestrian precincts where uh, traffic would be uh, would be would have to go around uh, the Ocean Boulevard piece. Um, so, just to just to sort of summarize what the what the basic issues were was that they found that uh, there were several kinds of traffic that that traverse Ocean Boulevard primarily. There's cruising traffic where people are circulating, uh, and they're either circulating just to, just to circulate or they're, uh, they're circulating uh, looking for a parking space right up at the beach. Uh, and then with a the one-way circulation on the side streets, it's difficult to kind of loop back and, and do a small loop. You have to do a big loop. Uh, th that's uh, kind of exacerbated by the fact that there are a lot of pedestrians in that particular zone as well, in front of the casino, and actually from uh, from Haverhill all the way up to uh, where the uh, where the uh, Marine Memorial is. There's an awful lot of pedestrian crossing, which is a problem if you're in a car and you're trying to get someplace because it's not real well defined. Uh, it's better defined now than it was with the state park improvements. Uh, but it was kind of a free-for-all, and that was creating uh, ad additional congestion. Uh, and then there's also uh, the sort of frustration factor of if you're in Seabrook and you're trying to get to Northampton, um, you have to go through all of that. You don't have any choice. So, you know, so you have those people mixing with all of the people that are just sort of out having a good time, and, and that creates... Uh, can create a bad situation with driver behavior because when people get frustrated, they don't always do the right thing. Um, so we uh, we have taken uh, another look at the existing conditions. We have mapped uh, sidewalks, uh, bicycle and transit accommodations. Uh, there isn't a lot of transit out here, as you know. Um, we did uh, traffic counts in August of 2014, knowing that uh, if we wanted to do design work, we needed that traffic data and we didn't want to wait around this summer for it. We'd rather be doing the design work this summer. So we collected, uh, it was, uh, I can't remember what date it was, but it was mid-August in 2014. It was a nice sunny beach day and uh, so we think we got good data to kind of calibrate the ongoing data collection uh, that is going on with uh, NHDOT and the Rockingham Planning Commission. Um, and we, uh, we actually put on the map uh, the recent state park improvements and we mapped uh, environmental <laughs> resources. So this is, the, uh, this is a depiction of the main study area. I mean, we're going to look at the entire beach, but uh, really, the focus of this effort is on the, uh, the section from Boar's Head south uh, to the bridge. And, um, you know, as we all know, there are, uh, there are environmental constraints. These are, uh, this is flood floodplain uh, mapping. Uh, that's something that 
we don't have a lot of uh, ability to study the, the whole notion of, uh, of resiliency to, uh, to sea level rise, uh, but we know that certainly if we look at this as a 50-year plan, that could be a major, uh, major factor going forward. Um, we mapped the parking, and uh, I have larger copies of these maps available if you, uh, if you have an opportunity to take a look at them tonight. If you see where we have screwed up someplace or not included something, by all means, you know, put a mark on the plan and, and let us know. <coughs> but there are, uh, there's kind of a patchwork of parking. Um, some of it is private, uh, much of it is public, and, uh, and it's all for sale. <laughs> so the, the issue really is that as we move forward and, and Hampton uh, Beach becomes a more popular uh, location for investment in real estate, uh, some of those parking lots are gonna get filled up with buildings. And so we need to uh, plan on having adequate parking for the visitors to both the state park and to the, to the businesses along the beach. Um, this is uh, sidewalks and, and bicycle facilities. The only real uh, dedicated bike lane is up at the north end of the beach and that's, uh, I think that's, is that Highland? I believe so. Um, and uh, there are some sort of multifunction um, sections, particularly along Ocean Boulevard and Ashworth Avenue. Uh, there's a, a, a wide striped shoulder on, on uh, Ashworth, and there's a very wide striped shoulder which actually functions as the sidewalk. Uh, so I'm not sure how adequate that is for bicycle accommodation, but there is a place for people to be. The issue along Ocean Boulevard is that, as you are probably well aware, is that the sidewalks that are there are probably five feet wide, um, where there are sidewalks and where there is curb. And I suspect that over time, with overlays and so forth of pavement, that there is a curb there all along there, but it's probably buried in 12 inches of pavement. So, um, so one of the one of the key issues is providing a safe place for pedestrians to be because there are an awful lot of them and uh, right now it's kind of a free-for-all. Um, and then also providing uh, adequate access for the businesses there to have deliveries and, and uh, to, to do what they need to do to be successful. Uh, these are those larger scale maps. They're uh, kind of a composite and as I said I've got large, uh, I've got large versions of those for people to take a look at. And I'd appreciate it if you if you would do that. Um, these have all of the sidewalks. They have all of the uh, on-street parking areas. They have uh, the state beach uh, parking areas, and uh, it really only goes up to up to Boris Head in this version. But um, we'll be doing a little bit more mapping as as we go. So uh, those are the. Those are the kind of parameters of what we've looked at. And what I'm interested in getting from you all is uh, what your specific concerns are. And uh, what I'd like to do, how many people do we have? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Um, if we broke up into three groups of eight, does that? Make sense? And I'd like to have about 15 or 20 minutes of discussion about these questions. So what, what do you think are the most pressing issues? Um, what are the best and the worst parts of being here in a car or on a bike or walking around? Did you have a question? Yes, well, you're on live television. How are you going to have these discussions ongoing? Well, we were going to kind of break the live television until we have a report out. And what we'll do is we'll have our discussions, we'll make a list, and then we'll talk about the lists and compile a master list. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and we'll do that live. And then we can... Um, 
I'd like to have everybody kind of vote in terms of, I've got little sticky, uh, sticky patches. We'll make a list and then everybody will get three stickies and you put them on what you think is the most important issue that comes out of this discussion. <coughs> okay, does that sound like a deal? You're a brave man. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not just me, it's Bob and Dale as well. So what we can do is, why don't we have a group up here and we'll set this table up, we'll have a group over at that table and we'll have a group here. And we can just sort of fold chairs around. Beautiful. We pull some of these chairs. I'm going to move the soft chairs. If we want to do it here, we can do it here. Yeah, this works. Okay, it's, it's going to be um, well, I'm going to just kind of like do uh, this group right over here, right here. And if you want to just bring the chair kind of Yeah, this little group right here. Here or there? It's <laughs> kind of here. Maybe not use that table, but kind yeah, of that's fine. Break those little circles. Bring a couple chairs up. Yeah, you have to be one of the people in this group. The cushion chairs are up here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, we'll go up there. <laughs> yes. How are you? I'm about the same. <laughs> I love this committee. Yeah. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Hide and then gang up? <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> so are they just going to keep on televising what they do yet? I don't know. Maybe they've just video without audio for a few minutes. They'll play music. We'll see. <laughs> Yes, it is. It, it made it onto the, uh, the, uh, the 10-year plan. We did, it, we did it just last year, and I was there and did it. You weren't there. My EMS guys can't get across that bridge. You, you made it. Emergency. 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 It's bad enough for tourists. Emergency access north and south on that bridge. It needs, to be, it needs to be replaced with a fixed four inch fan. Okay. So it needs to be wider and have more options. Yes. 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 Four people have died on that. Four pedestrians have died on that bridge. Well, that was some well, person. It had nothing to do with it. It was some person with issues, but never was. That's for two or three. That is set up on the other side of the bridge for four lanes. That's four lanes. Two DFT staff. North of Ashworth. It has nothing to do with Tracy Wright. No, no, no. no. Drunk drugs or anything else. said, bring it through this way. This, this thing, this thing right here. Yeah. Well, that's just it's 
an easy one to do if you can get the money. <laughs> Everything will be easy. Because the location of the previous break is just a You can break, put in two new lanes here and then switch the traffic over it and then put two lanes on here, like they've done on the bridge of Well, all of this I saw the books, it's the law. It's the law. And, and, and just, just very easy. Listen. Rocky Gordon came up with the best idea of all. Take the span out of the middle when you get to that part and put it over here in the fishing area. So that people can see the work of the basket and it has some historic value. And you still have a fishing area where you go over here. Right. Or excuse me, I'm talking about over here. It would go, it would go right here. It would go right here. So yeah, yeah. You take that, that, that span down. How are the boats going to get from here over to here? No, this, this is the state line. This is the river. Oh, okay. This is the river. Where did you wear this is the river. Okay. I'm, 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 here, here's the very over here. I gave us the very end of the Okay. All right. Well, you know what? That's the current bridge. The old bridge came down, this road used to come down here, it came along this road right here. The old mile long bridge was a behind this today. So, but I'm just saying, to be put another entrance is in there where it's in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah
I'm in real estate. Ooh, I mean, that is, um, you can't, yeah, right, right, right. You can't get the sidewalks you can't. or like, you know, I guess hopefully, how much work, what kind of work, what is it to be done. And I know you're going to figure that out. That's not, I know that, but I'm just wondering. Like, we're one of those people that have to go from Seabrook to the Do you agree? Are there any definites? We'll do that walkway. Okay. This is like the blank slate. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to I just parked in the Boston Sea Force on Saturday, and I had to park everywhere for $10. Everywhere. So, you got to one space, one lot, I tried searching it. I never heard of Well, most of first of all, no. Yeah, tourist buses. Yeah, well, I know it's real ways. Oh, it's a yellow line down there. Right now, it's just dead. So that's a Yeah, 
I'm serious. Okay. So many, so many of you have that's the yeah, it's fun in the sun, but I think there's something like this with enforcement people that way. No. I remember when I was in this year, I said, I'm going to go to this thing. I'm going to go to this thing. I'm going to go to I'm going to take some pictures so I can talk to you. Yeah, right. Well, we never say took it out. So, we write that down? Yeah. Is write down? You know that I hear at the center and and Yeah, I'm 
road as you know, it is. Yeah. Yeah. on the sidewalk from Washington right there. Yeah. No, but I'm, I'm going to. Now we get My to husband's that. already composed. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just going to get the well, they do, but I mean, I, I do believe that the major space park. I do know we're discussing the intersections and all the signals out there. Well, you know, the crosswalks are all going to be they must be in the wrong place. Well, yeah. Well, the deck. Well, the deck. Well, the deck. That's one theory of where to put the wall. We only have one deck. We only have one deck. Yeah, right. Yeah, I I well, yeah, right, 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 right off. I right. think that's yeah. a really yeah. yeah. good way back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 There are three there are three in the morning. You can't see that. One is the I wish you like I could say, but I don't know what the policy is. So I've only been a part of news or yeah, 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 absolutely. So we can do that, and then instead of doing segments, do what about the multimodal system that keeps the traffic flowing? That should be which can handle a lot of things. We don't need to have a separate provider. Yeah, we can absolutely, you know, in the office, it's a lot of money. Yeah, I don't know if that allows for that service to come through if you can find the operating system. You could signal on, on ocean. Yeah. You know, or, or the other way, yeah. we, uh, we format with uh, Rocky so Pool. That's where if you want. Well, you know, I mean, and I'm not suggesting that this is a There's some data collected. I don't think it's on the bridge. I think that you have to look at Las Vegas Boulevard is one of the busiest places. Water vehicles or cars, barriers. Yes, you they did. Yes, they did. They do that on July 4th. Those the barriers they put up at the food stand. Because otherwise, you know, so if you had a wide enough side traffic, you're not even going to be considering doing that. Somehow, there are barriers on the cars. Do you remember Professor Rizzo's barrier? That was a solution back then. 
and stuff like that. That is wide enough to do that. It's been made that way. Between the West Side and the West Side, we're talking about pedestrian traffic. No, I'm talking the other Any other ones that I see along South Pizza and that out. I think it's all the other ones. There's a place that we can go for a few weeks. Yeah. That's right on that. It gets so hot. 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 I know they do it during the state for it. I've seen a lot of people like I saw in the article. They'll be like this. And they were in front of the sales pizza. And it's not the rest of the Traffic, yeah. It's nice to have one of the way. Just right Yeah, it's just to petition the... That's a dangerous By putting a full floor in the section, it gives you the option to take that land Yeah. <laughs> 
And uh, what we'll do is we will take these off and these are sticky. Push them up on the wall and people can walk around and we'll do a report out and then yeah, So what we'd like to do is we'll just take a few minutes and just kind of recap for the other groups what uh, what was discussed. And then I've got some little sticky things and uh, we'll put these up on the wall and everybody gets, I don't know, we'll pick a number, three or four, and we'll, you can put them, put them next to whatever issue you think resonates with you. And that'll give us some idea of what the most important uh, things might be. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to take these and try to condense them into one set of sheets. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just go through each, each one. So let me start. Um, we talked about uh, congestion, basically, uh, on turnover day. Um, at, at basically all of, the, all of the entrances to the beach. Uh, so 101E, I guess, Winnicunnet Road backs up all the way, you know, sometimes back to, to Route 1. Uh, same thing kind of happens on Route 101. Uh, all of the side streets coming into the beach are, are problematic. Um, once you get to the beach at almost every entrance, there's really nowhere to go. You don't really realize you're anywhere. Um, so the sort of gateway aspect and uh, it is an issue. And that's kind of related to this wayfinding and directional uh, signage uh, issue as well. Um, 
our group thought that the state park is underutilized, so there's a lot of potential there for uh, for solving some of the some of the issues. But again, there's no there's nothing that tells people uh, where to go. Uh, shuttle loop uh, taking people around the beach uh, is something that is needed. We talked a little bit about developing some sort of an app or an, ap an application on a smartphone that might, uh, that might direct people to parking. Uh, and it could also serve to uh, give people uh, evacuation alerts and other kinds of alerts as well and help people get out of here uh, if they need to. Um, reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard was a, was a real key concern. Uh, both from the standpoint of uh, pedestrian accommodations and for uh, stormwater. Uh, we talked a little bit about site distance at intersections, creating unsafe conditions. Uh, we need a bathhouse yes. near Winniconnet Road. Yes. And we think that uh, uh, the police could help <laughs> yeah. with traffic control and with, uh, with pedestrian control and, you know, that, I mean, my take on it is that there's plenty of police, but they're not all doing, you know, perhaps with what uh, what they need to be doing at all times. So, um, what do you mean by that? Well, in terms of uh, we haven't had the whole town to cover it. I, I know that. I know that. You're going to trip. So uh, that was basically our deal. So you want to go too far with this and go too far with it. <laughs> So uh, we had a good discussion. Uh, we primarily focused on the, on the pressing issues. We didn't get that much past that. Um, we had a discussion on the, on the entrance to the state park, the, the CPA lot. Uh, it's, a, it's a hard right in, it's a hard right out. Um, lack of, of, of good signage. So you have people coming up, uh, missing the entrance, and then looping all the way around. So we talked a little bit about um, the use of a side street um, to, to cut across to uh, shorten that cycle time, potentially. Um, we also had a discussion about uh, potential for a rail alternative from Route 1 into the beach, uh, potentially uh, adding a, an additional transportation corridor. We discussed a, a, a lack of um, a parking at the beachfront. Uh, you know, as we've discussed with the, with the cruising and um, lack of uh, the, the utilization down at the at the state park, um, that that could be better utilized. Uh, we had a discussion on reasonably priced parking within within the beach and. Um, <laughs> to Ray on yes. Uh, <laughs> And, and related to the to the CPA lot was the you know the emergency access with the with the vehicles queuing up in that area it's difficult to for emergency access in and out of that into that area um, uh, better utilization uh, a, a dedicated uh, bus lane um, another thing that came up was who has ownership of the of the sidewalks that was uh, an issue well um, phrased just see here. Yes. Uh, increasing the the width of the sidewalks, uh, especially particularly Ashworth North, and again from Boar's Head um, to to Winnicott. Um, some other issues related to the sidewalks would be uh, skate uh, skateboards and, and bicycles on on the sidewalks, impacting the pedestrian traffic. Mm -hmm. Um, we also talked about potentially implementing some uh, temporary traffic controls uh, seasonally to, to help out uh, in managing um, the, the traffic. In particular, I guess there was a uh, Jersey barrier constructed last year to help with, with some traffic. Um, and let's see here. And uh, north of Boar's Head with the seawall and, and uh, Issues with line of sight. So we, uh, it was, I believe it was in reference to um, with uh, bicycle safety. So, so that uh, covers our discussion.
Yeah. So Gordon gets the award for the best penmanship of the evening. <laughs> but we generated a little more paper, but our writing is horrific. Yes, it is. So I'm, I'm just going to, so, so the group over here is, um, I'm going to call this group the Drill to China group because they would grab on something and drill deeper and deeper and deeper yeah. to really, so, so we, we, we and, and so what I'm going to do is just focus on the things that are different from what you've already heard. So pressing issues at the very top was the bridge and a sense about the bridge's limitations. I guess it's on a, on a list to be addressed. And, um, and in the context of a whole Route 1 question is the bridge's capacity to be a part of moving regional, regional traffic with a ma major issues also on, um, on emergency access. Uh, emergency access. There were a number of other issues relative to the bridge that came up that are really bridge specific. We'll, we'll pick those up uh, as we go. The next thing that came up was sidewalks. And I think basically to summarize that is, is a significant interest and willingness to create more space on the west side of the, of the street to have more room for sidewalks. There are some sort of uh, uh, agreements that have been struck to date uh, you know, with the DOT about how much space might be made available. I think that's why we're doing the study, is to actually kind of figure that out and, and to do more and to do, take that further. Um, uh, as a part of sidewalks, we're cross, the crosswalks, the efficacy of all this, of the, of the side, of the side streets feeding into Ocean Boulevard and connecting back and forth, particularly with a lot of parking further west on the, uh, uh, you know, on the western part of the village and, and everybody's filtering through and looking for really good ways to filter through the, through the uh, grid of streets out to, owner, uh, out to Ocean Boulevard. Um, maintenance and ownership of yes. sidewalks. So I think we're going to be, at some point, we'll, we will be looking at, you know, the difference between functional sidewalks, attractive and beautiful sidewalks of, you know, relative to the aesthetics of what kind of a sidewalk we create and how much it costs and how, you make, how it gets maintained. Um, there, that then opened the door for a bigger question called, which we just called broader transportation issues. and. Um, basically a sense that it, as I mean, presently the intermodal opportunity here is a taxi service and for people that don't want to have a car or don't you know don't don't have a car available there is a taxi with limited with limited service uh, options although people appear to be pleased with it I asked is that an inter, you know is that a public trans transportation solution they said no there's a lot more than that mm -hmm. so so everybody gets that the the building of the intermodal center and a plan for shuttles and all of that will be a longer term much broader solution that has all sorts of opportunities um, for the for the future and the things that we talked about on that two basic relationship is if we have transit there needs to be space for it to function relative to circulation space and there also needs to be a place so that people <laughs> recognize it is there and it's a viable visible part of the uh, of the town's environment the other part of that is connecting the the amount of uh, of traffic that transit might take off the road and, uh, and out of the parking demand out at the beach relative to looking at it potentially at the intermodal center, the relationship of that of parking supply both out on, you know, on the beach as well as at the intermodal center and then also sort of a, 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 a relationship of that to the potential reduction in, in congestion as a result of having a more robust transit system. All those things are connected. Parting shots. We actually, uh, well, the, really, the, the the two major things on uh, walking and biking is people basically walk in the street, so they obviously need more room. So we've, I'd say broad consensus that that we need to make a lot more room for people to have a, a nice, attractive, and safe feeling walking environment. And bikes basically ride with cars. So all of those are really on the table in terms of receptivity to. Uh, figuring this out um, through the process. Skateboards came in as an additional sort of wild card in terms of uh, movement and uh, a few, few uh, adventure stories of people's encounter with skateboarders. And then uh, parting shots, uh, 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 a, a real aversion to a signal-based uh, uh, control of traffic out there. 
um, and, uh, and a suggestion that through traffic calming and you know, st you know, good street design that we could make circulation uh, through, all, through the whole system uh, really work a lot better. So everybody was great and we had a, uh, quite a lot of uh, intellectual capital in this, in this particular group that were great. Okay, so we've got a little arguing too. <laughs> I had to break up a couple fist fights. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is, yeah, what we can do is uh, put these up on the wall. I'll do that. And, uh, you keep talking. Yeah, if you can, like, double up on that. Um, and what I'd like you all to do is I've got uh, three stickies. And I'd like you to sort of go around and look at these issues and put a sticky next to the ones that you think are the most important. Okay? The we'll colors take, don't mean anything. Colors don't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a, a non-scientific way of like, sort of getting a consensus of, of what people think is important. Thank you. And we'll take, you take five minutes to do that, or ten minutes? Yeah, so you worry about that?
And they fixed it, and now it's climbed up again, and it's all that jazz and yeah. um, I don't know. <laughs> In the past, we talked, and it got made up here. <laughs> No, I mean, I, oh. made, I made too many. <laughs> Those are people that have no opinion. Right. <laughs> Very few of those around. Sorry. Okay. I just wanted to take uh, a few more minutes to uh, talk about, you know, sort of what's next and, and some of the other things that we have going on. Um, we are, this is our first public outreach session. We're going to do... Uh, as, as William indicated, a couple uh, of, of public workshops. So uh, we're going to take this information, the data we've collected, the, uh, you know, all the information from the previous plans, and we're going to try to come up with some alternatives that make sense for 2015. And um, we'll be back in uh, the early fall, sometime, you know, around Labor Day. We're not the dynamic here is that we're trying to do these kinds of things where people have time to attend uh, and we know that it's a short season and everybody is going to get really busy here very quickly so um, so we haven't set a date but it'll be sometime probably just after Labor Day um, we have a website if you're interested uh, it is uh, planhamptonbeach2015.com is that space supposed to be in there between Plan and Hampton? No, okay. it is not. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry about that. It's just a ref <laughs> it's just a reflex. Yep. Um, we also have a Facebook uh, and Twitter account, so you can like the page on Facebook, and you'll get updates on uh, you know notifications and whatever we have going on. 
and we can carry out a dialogue on, on Facebook, and that is Plan Hampton Beach 2015. And then there's another application called My Sidewalk. It used to be called Mind Mixer. Uh, My Sidewalk is a, uh, it's a public facilitation uh, website, and you can get there by going to mysidewalk.com and doing a search for Hampton, New Hampshire, or Hampton Beach. And it'll take you to this page, which is the 2015 Hampton Beach Transportation Master Plan update page. And the whole purpose of this is that uh, it allows us to post questions. It allows anybody to post questions and have a dialogue <coughs> with each other around a set of issues online. Now, this is not an anonymous thing. You have to create an account. Uh, and. You know, it's not going to lead to a bunch of spam. They're not selling your information or anything, but it allows us to know if you know somebody gets out of line. You know, we know who to call. Um, so it's uh, frankly my first time using this, uh, but it looks like a very exciting way to have to continue this kind of conversation. So if something comes up and it strikes you as oh geez, I forgot to say something about this. By all means, go on to the site and you can post a, a query. You can, uh, uh, there's also a comment and question uh, part of the website. All of these things are or will be linked together. So you can go to the website, it will have a link to this page. Uh, it'll have a link to the Facebook. It'll have a li link to the Twitter account uh, and vice versa. So we hope to, <coughs> we hope that this isn't the end of the conversation. Um, because I find this very interesting and I find it very helpful in terms of uh, you know, crafting a plan that ultimately is going to meet your needs as a community and that's kind of what we're, what we're about. Um, in terms of, of schedule, as I said, this is the beginning of the design and alternatives generation process. Um, the website and all the other social media are live today. Um, and uh, we'll have a second public workshop once we have a chance to uh, develop some alternatives and, and priorities, and we'll schedule that for later on in the summer. And then after that, we hope to take whatever comes out of that public session, um, develop a, an implementation plan based on the priorities that come out of that discussion, uh, develop uh, some uh, a document that is an update to the uh, 2001 uh, master plan document that the HBAC has adopted and have that uh, be ready for adoption by the end of this year. So we'll need, after, after we have our meeting in September, we'll have uh, a couple of months to put together the implementation piece of it and, and uh, uh, come up with a document that that responds to uh, to what we've heard <coughs> and, and what's coming out of the community discussions. So that is it for tonight. And thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate the fact that uh, you came, and I'm, I particularly appreciate the fact that you're very you appear to be very very engaged in the conversation. So um, if you have any if you have any questions or if something uh, strikes you, go to the website and you can you can get to me directly. Uh, you can get to uh, all these other tools that we have in place. So thank you. Any any questions or? Thank you. And, and on behalf of the uh, Beach Commission, thank you very much for coming. And I think one of the things that Gordon said, which is going to be great throughout this whole process, is that this meeting will continue live, not only on the Channel 22, but through social media. So people that uh, may be watching from home that didn't have an opportunity to interact during the, uh, the breakouts can now soon be able to interact via different social media uh, aspects. Um, and I, one, th one other thing that I will assign, because we do have a, uh, what our Beach Commission is understand as our honorary commissioner with regard to Mr. Preston, and, and since Mr. Preston doesn't go on the internet much, the other Mr. Preston, the commissioner, will interact with Mr. Preston here for any involvement in any input. 
So thank you all. Uh, and just one other thing. If uh, there is a sign-in sheet, if you didn't sign in, please do. Uh, I'm going to use those web, those uh, email addresses, and you will get an invitation to, the, uh, to join the, the uh, My Sidewalk account. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you.